In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're going to show you how to put a fire extinguisher in your car. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Now, no one likes to be on fire. Do they, Martin? No. Either a ring of fire downstairs or a ring of fire around their car. Or this girl is on fire. Ex what? Yeah, that song? No. I said this man, my undies are on fire. I think it's my undies are on fire. Okay, good. There's treatment for that. But with an impending battle between our mad JDM rides, uh, we thought it would be prudent to install some fire extinguishers in our car. So today we're going to teach you how to do it step by step. Step one is go and get yourself a fire extinguisher. There's many different types of fire extinguishers and you need one that's made for cars. Fire extinguishers? Yeah. Downstairs. Downstairs. To your left. Thanks. Um, just Do you have the metal ones as well as the plastic ones, like the car ones with the metal bracket? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Oh, it's so weird. I can hear my voice on your TV. <laughs> and I can hear my voice coming out of my own face. <laughs> it's the original grabs. Yeah, that's what we need. Thanks, man. Unreal, right? Thanks, man. So we've picked up our fire extinguisher, and remember, when you go and buy one, you want to get something that actually locks down. Now, this one here has a metal bracket around there. It's made for cars. This one here complies with cams, which is kind of like the Australian motoring um, racing body thing that makes sure people do things that they're meant to. What's the difference between these and ones that you have in your house? Actually, I'll show you. Come this way. So over here in our shed, this is like the worst kind that you w would want in your car. So see this? Like that. Really easy to grab. It's on a big rubber flappy thing, just like the thing Marty took to New Zealand. Ah! This is great for your house because you can just grab it like this. No good for your car because under cornering or acceleration, that's just going to fall out. I just broke it. There we go. Uh, is that... Oops, all right. And the next version that you get is something like this that we have near our work area. So this one here is in a metal bracket. Again, it's, it's like fairly sturdy, but again, is not specifically made for cars. You want something that is actually going to latch down. This is one kilo. Ah, I just cut myself so bad. Paper cut under the fingernail. Oh, oh that's the worst. Oh, that's bad. Ah. They sting, man. Oh, wow. Let's get some ethanol. It'll fix it. Um, so these ones here that we're going to mount today are actually under a quick release metal bracket like that. And then you pull out like that. So let's install them in a car. Marty is going to show you what tools you're going to need. So these are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a tape measure and a marker in order to mark your bit of steel plate. You can use aluminium too if you want to or any other material that you see fit. You're going to need something to undo the bolts on your seat. You're going to need some nuts and bolts to attach everything, some drill bits, a hacksaw or a grinder. Uh, you're going to need a drill and associated drill bits. You're also going to need some safety equipment and importantly, your fire extinguisher. And to make things easier for yourself, whenever you're making stuff for your car, it's a good idea to get yourself a bench vise that makes everything heaps easier. Measure the distance between your seating rails and then transfer these measurements onto some metal bar. You can cut it with a hacksaw or to save some time, you can smash it with an angle grinder. Once that's cut, you're gonna drill a hole in one end. Remember to check that the bolts in your seat rails have enough thread to hold everything together securely. If they don't, replace them with proper quality bolts of the same rating. So I've drilled one hole in our bit of metal. Now I'm just going to uh, test fit it on here. Every car's a little bit different. There's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. One, you want to make sure the fire extinguisher doesn't get in the way of the thing sliding back and forth. Even though you think you might leave it all the way back the whole time, you never really know and you also don't want to compromise the way the seat works. So, in this car, I'm going to have to bend it just to go over the hump of the floor pan. It shouldn't get in the way of the seat, but I'm just going to have to experiment with that a little bit and just sort of bend it out of the way, which is really easy in a vice with a vice and a hammer. This is just to support the fire extinguisher, which is not that heavy, so you don't have to drill into your car. You can use some multi cribs and a vice to add any bends to make your bar fit perfectly. So I've test fitted this to the car, I've bent it up by putting in the vise and just grabbing some multi grips and twisting it. This stuff's quite thin and so it's fairly easy to do but it's strong enough to hold the extinguisher onto. I've also test fit that to the car to make sure it's going to work but that is pretty much what you're looking at. So that, that bolts up against the seat and then the extinguisher hangs off the front of it 
bolted nice and tight and when you need to grab it you just flick that off and pull the extinguisher out. So I'm going to drill the second hole now that I've marked here, check that it's bent the right way, test fit it, make sure the seat slides and then bolt it to the little bracket and it's done. You know what I like about that, Martin? What's that? You don't have to drill holes in your Mad Saab. You do not have to drill... Are you going to drill holes in your Mad Saab? I'm going to, yes. I'm oh, mad. Um, but, um, I like that because that's like removable. It is. Put it in, put it out. You don't have to cut carpet. You don't have to do anything messy at all, I which I think is really cool. I've had a couple of these in all the liberties that I've had, and because Subaru always has the same spacing on the seats, you just take it with you. So you build it once and then put it in all your different cars. That's cool. Mm. Which for people with Evos... It makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it, Martin? That's not an Evo, mate. When you move, when you go from this to another Evo, you can just take it with you. How good are Evos? Neither of us would know. Now drill a hole in the other end. All right, so that is done and bent to shape. Now I just need to test fit it and make sure it fits on. Another thing you want to do is make sure that the bolts that go through, or in our case, the nuts. You don't want to take up too much thread, just this is only a couple of mil thick so it won't make much difference. It fits on. Now that your bar is made, you can measure up the holes to attach the bracket. Now if you've never made anything for your car from scratch before, this is one of the kind of easiest and funnest things you can do. You don't need many tools to do it and you for a lot of track days, you actually have to have a fire extinguisher. Um, we've done this on the side of the track a few times and we've rolled up and they've said, oh, by the way, you need one. So it can be done with fairly simple tools. So all that's left to do now is drill this in so that we can attach the bracket, attach this to the car, and paint it up to make it look nice, and it's done. That is the definition of just a mad, cheap, easy weekend project, Martin, isn't it? And it's, and it's safety too, you know, like, actually, Probably one of the best uses, even if hopefully you never need it, but I mean, a friend of mine was, was just driving into the city once and then the woman in front of him, her, her car just caught on fire. Yeah. And so he grabbed his fire extinguisher out of there, he put the car out and then the cops and everyone came and went, oh yeah, cool, thanks for that. He went on his way and bought another $20 fire extinguisher and probably saved her car. Potentially lives. Next up, drill two holes for the bracket and then bolt it up. Trim off the end of the bolts and round off any sharp edges, and then the whole thing is ready to get attached inside the car. You're at the track, you're pulling mag, next minute your Bluetooth dildo catches on fire, what do you do? You're in the driver's seat, you're belted in, you need to be able to just lean down, reach forward, unlatch your fire extinguisher, grab it, pull it out, and then go and put out your mad fire. Well, your fire's not mad, is it? Really? Is it mad? The fire extinguisher's mad. And that is one way of putting in a fire extinguisher, Martin. That is one way. And now we're going to show you another way on my modified Saab 900 Turbo. Some people have them here, some people have them here, some people have them there. Um, I'm gonna put mine down here, but I'm gonna install it in a slightly different way using a rib nut, which is this mad little thing, and I'll show you how it works. So this is a rivet nut gun, and it sounds rude, but what it does is it works just like a normal rivet gun, except it actually puts thread through, which means that you can drill a hole in some part of your car, you don't need to get to the other side, and it'll squash the sheath around like that, which means if you need to attach a bolt to something, you can put that in, squeeze it, it locks it in, and then you can bolt into it without having to get to the other side. I'll give you a demo and show you how it works. So that is now locked in there. That is an M6 bolt. It is not going anywhere. And if that was in a part of your car where you couldn't access the other side, now you can get a bolt and put that in there like that. That is freaking mad. Place your bracket in position and mark out where to drill your holes. Once this is done, you can cut out some of the underlay, which will help your bit from getting covered in hair and fur once you're reaming it on the floor of your Festi Saab. Larger bit, this is 9mm, and that is the size that we need for an M6 uh, nut from our rip gun. Drill two holes, carefully checking that you're not going to go through anything important under the car. 
Then grab your rivet nut and smash two of them into the holes, making sure they are properly crushed. Then simply attach your bracket and make sure that your seat can still move and you, my friends, are all done with your MAD fire extinguisher install. So there it is, that is how to put a fire extinguisher in your car for maximum safety. And it's a MAD, simple weekend project in terms of when it actually comes to racetracks, different places, different countries, different racetracks have their own legislations and their own rules. So check with those guys first. That's right, and the fire extinguishers are not just set and forget, there is maintenance too. So you can check on the box and see how often you need to get it tested or shake it up, whatever it is that you've got to do. And the thing is, they're so cheap. Like, they're literally like 20 bucks. So it, it is something that, you know, you can replace. If you do need to use it, you've already got the bracket. Everything is there. That is it. Now, Martin, speaking of fire, my mouth's on fire, my friend. Why? These things are ridiculous. Oh, my chili corn nuts. Oh, so you're much on my chili corn nuts. Chili man. corn nuts. Look at the chilliness. How good are they? Oh, that's mad. Of course, um, keep your eyeballs on our face balls. Faceballs.com forward slash mighty car mods. And yes, we ship worldwide with mighty car mods merchandise t shirts, stickers, mad stuff. Mightycarmods.com. There you go. We don't even need to talk about what we're going to eat. I'm just going to munch chili corn nuts. Oh, it's so good, man. They're amazing. Last nuts I was munching on was super hairy. But...